This week's winner will receive a classic 1980s HDT Brock Holt performance Commodore. Now, we understand there may be an incident of some kind yeah, on the circuit. there's a huge incident, a huge yeah, incident. There'll be people diving into the pit lane here. And it's going to trigger a safety oh car. A car's gone Jason over Richards. in the middle of the road here. Is, Jason all right? Is this a replica of the Carrera Cup incident we saw earlier in the weekend? There was a Jay, massive Jason. roll involving Cameron McLean. It looks to be in a similar position. Watch this. This is the exit of turn three. The trouble here between Paul Morris and Jason Richards. Whoa! Oh. Exactly the same problem. Straight up and over that ripple strip which has been questioned by many of the senior drivers and Jason Richards a monumental accident that was a brand new car at the beginning of the year watch this monumental rollover for Richards wow unbelievable well he was moving around we hope that Jason's okay and he's climbing out of the car but that car is absolutely shot and uh, he that's might be a, winded there. That's a dreadful sight, isn't it? Look at the state of that car. A deeply disappointed Jason Richards. He came to this round a, a little happier, Neil. He won a, a court case against former employer Team Dynamic. Here it is again, Zinger replay battle between himself and Paul Morris. They make contact on the exit of the corner. See, there's an extra bit of apron out there which the drivers use. And as Paul Morris has come back to the right, he's tagged Richards. And then Jason's launched straight over the top of that ripple strip, the very one that got Cameron McLean yesterday. And that ripple strip is there for when they use one of the short circuit options and the cars run in a different direction. It becomes an apex marker, but you've got to ask the question, look at the damage on that car. Uh, is it necessary in the middle of a major race like this to have a trip wire there effectively? There it is. That's the one we're talking about. Those black marks were largely left yesterday by Cameron McLean, and now there it is again causing problems today. It plays no role in the exit of that corner. Just the adjoining the cars road. coming the other way, back down that straight from what we describe as turn four, it becomes a delineating or apex mark. Kevin Murphy there would be horrified to see the damage. Trevor Ashby in the background. Tim Miles, one of the co-owners of the team as well, and have a look. And yesterday, the Carrera Cup Porsche GT3 of Cameron McLean was a throwaway. And this is a carbon copy. We've got two cars worth half a million dollars that have been destroyed. Let's have a look at McLean's one here now. This was with uh, Rodney Jones. Exactly the same deal. Exactly the same deal. It's funny because uh, I've been involved in circuit inspections here in the past, and it's something that's escaped us. And obviously, uh, it's in the homologation drawings on the circuit, and it's all quite legal and approved. But Mark Scaife spoke to me about it this morning, and he, for one, was very concerned about what he saw yesterday. And I'm sure that... This will be the subject of discussion I'm now, I'm sure it will definitely. be discussed pretty uh, seriously. Take a, another look at that incident yesterday involving Cameron McLean, former V8 privateer and super touring racer. Look at the air he gets. It bites and throws him. Frightening, frightening stuff. He too, fortunately, walked away. And this is the one that happened just moments ago. And Jason Richards, just monumental damage to the front and back of the car. A little oil fire in the rear as one of the brake lines has come off. Other people taking the opportunity to uh, just tick off their remaining service. Neil, it's difficult there out of that turn. As you know, out of three, where the track joins on the exit of three, it joins up with turn six. It cuts between the circuits, so it makes another circuit around here. But the drivers come out there, as you know, and they run wide out there using all the racetrack, and they try to initially turn back in because they know if they hit that curbing in with two wheels and a straight line, it sends a car up in the air. So Morris trying to get back on line as well. Well, that's right. See, they go out there. They're, they're hunting for extra space on the apron and the exit of the corner. But you're compelled, is what you're saying, to put some right lock on to get back onto the more conventional race line. Otherwise, you'll just leap straight over that thing. And the point you made before, too, was that, that the circuit has a number of configurations yes. that can be used. And they have used NASCAR races and things like that here before. Well, now, what happens, they come out of turn two, and there's a little joining road halfway down the back of uh, the, the back straight. So they can do like a little chicane there, which actually brings them to the infield section running in the other direction. Then they do a right hand of what we're describing where that ripple strip is, and then come back into it. As Daryl says, uh, 
turn six. Now, so when the cars are running in the other direction on a totally different configuration circuit, that is a normal standard ripple strip, a conventional shape, and it's part of the apex marker for that corner. The problem is cars here are running in the other direction, and now twice in two days, it's been the source of a massive rollover. Well, one man who certainly knows uh, what happens in that sort of a rollover incident, Cameron McLean, you went through that yesterday, mate. We, did ex we had exactly that same problem. It looked identical, just different make of cars. You know, um, I hope Jason now there, he's all right. He got out of the car, he helped, got helped out, but he walked away, and it's, it's a massive crash. I know exactly what he's feeling like, and he'll feel a lot sore tomorrow, I think. So what happened specifically to you yesterday and injury-wise? It's amazing. The cars now are built so so well and they've they got the hands device and all the safety gear and the good seats. Yeah, you're actually held in there pretty well. I was, I was really surprised how well we stood up to it. You know, I only got bit my tongue and that's about the worst of it. How many turns do you think you did? How many rolls in the air? Oh, exactly. I got, a, I got a, a, a DVD of my good friends at Channel 10. It was seven and three quarters. I think it's a new world record. Thank you. No worries. Thanks. The right pad. Shakespeare safety car is on circuit here at Queensland Raceway. A big incident involving the Kiwi Jason Richards. He's A-OK. -okay. Craig Lowndes is top of the order from Marcus Ambrose, but the field is all bunched up once again. Now, by comparison to the assessment of yesterday's incident involving Cameron McLean, yesterday Thomas Mazira, the driving standards observer for Carrera Cup, and team that look after that series deemed the incident involving Cameron McLean to be a, a racing incident but this is very very different involving Paul Morris and he is blueing about it on the radio too he's not a happy camper at the moment Nigel Barclay his man telling him there's nothing we can do about it you've got to come in the lane and serve this one out do the crime serve the time Morris does not want to come in and serve this penalty Not a great deal he can do about it at present, Neil. No. There he is. He can argue about it all day long. They've issued an instruction and that's oh, that's it. That's the most bullshit thing I've ever seen Well, there you have it. He's trying to clarify with his team just what's happened in this, this process of... There's no, there's no clarification. There's a black flag bleed being shown, so it's a straightforward process. It's not debatable, unfortunately. The arguing needs to happen afterwards. afterwards. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, when you're in the helmet and you're in the car and you're hot under the collar, of course, you want to make an issue out of it. But uh, for Nigel Barclay, he's, uh, he is a burning and uh, he knows that there's not much he can do about it. Now Paul Seprinich is uh, he's telling Paul, if you don't get on with it, we're going to get a, a bigger slap on the wrist. So let's see if he peels in here. Morris is in the lane to serve the penalty. And this will be interesting. Cast your mind back to Bathurst some years ago with a pretty fired up Greg Murphy. He served a five minute penalty. They stood still for five minutes. Morris will be stopped here for 60 seconds. So a uh, lifetime. When it gets to about 50 seconds, then you start it, okay? Cyprinich there to the right. Very talented engineer who's worked over the years with BMW in sports cars and in super touring and for a time there was with the Stone Brothers outfit, now very much a part of Paul Morris Motorsport and has been for many years. an eternity for Paul Morris. So that the extra message that came across to Paul Morris there was from someone that had been down to this building where the stewards and the IPO go, are go. the investigating and prosecuting officer and they confirmed that they've looked at it, they've made their decision, it's not debatable. The problem now for Paul is that he's just got to get on with the job of driving his race car, have the blue by all means afterwards. But all this will do at the moment is slow him down because his job, he's, he's not focused on the job. 